Yo, in this video I'll be explaining how to hit your arc shots with the Tri-Stringer in Splatoon 3. I'm also going to be making more Tri-Stringer content for Splatoon 3 in the future, so please consider liking and subscribing to the channel for that. Though a lot of people right now may think the Tri-Stringer is not that good of a weapon, it has amazing strengths. It has one-shot potential, it can shoot over obstacles, and it has spammable AoE projectiles that can almost act like Tenta missiles at times. But what really ties all of these strengths together into a powerful weapon is the Tri-Stringer's ability to arc its shots. If you want to improve with the Tri-Stringer and learn how to use it effectively, you need to learn and practice aiming your arc shots. It definitely looks difficult, and it definitely takes some solid experience with the Tri-Stringer to be able to get it down. But once you get better at it, you will be hell to deal with for anyone trying to hide behind cover or control an objective like in tower control. There are some important things you need to know about the Tri-Stringer before you can go for arc shots though. First off, the Tri-Stringer reaches its maximum damage only after the first charge. Knowing this, you don't have to full charge with this weapon all the time if you're going for kills or heavy pressure. In order to master arc shots, you have to have a general feel for the range that the Tri-Stringer has at different charges. My tip to make certain charge ranges easier to remember is to subdivide the second charge ring into quarters. Lastly, be aware that at shorter ranges, you'll likely not be hitting full direct arc shots, as the shot spread still applies. With the Tri-Stringer, you should always be aiming for chip damage wherever a full direct shot is unoptimal. However, you'll find that the spread is drastically less for how I'm going to show you how to do it. Alright, now that you know all that, let's get to the good part. When you go for an arc shot on an enemy, you first have to gauge at least roughly the least amount of charge you'd need to reach them using your grounded shot if you were to look directly at them. This applies for not only enemies on the same ground level as you, but also for enemies above and below you. I'll refer to this level of charge as the grounded charge. Once you know this, you're going to want to aim roughly 40 to 45 degrees up your arc shot angle. When you have this angle lined up, you're going to want to charge up your shot to around your grounded charge. For shorter ranges, to compensate for the spread and weaker shot velocity, you should charge a little bit past that, around roughly an extra eighth of charge should suffice. Once you have all this down, go for a shot. Either a horizontal or vertical shot will do. I usually go for vertical shots as this reduces the spread at shorter distances, but horizontal shots still have their use. Even with this method that I use, hitting direct arc shots is still very difficult and precise. However, you'll still be guaranteeing AoE damage, which is still amazingly useful and can still net you kills. Using this arc shot technique, you can now pressure a lot of cover spaces with the pressure of the charger and slosher combined. Hopefully this technique works for you guys as it generally has for me. We've reached the end of the video now, so before it ends, I have a few things I want to say. I'm planning on making more informational content on the Tri-Stringer in Splatoon 3 in order to teach people how to use this weapon properly and stop throwing in my ranked battles. I feel like there's been very little Tri-Stringer content so far in the Splatoon community, so I think that what I'm doing is hard to find anywhere else. If you or anyone you know has any interest in learning the Tri-Stringer, please feel free to share my videos around. And of course, I would greatly appreciate a like and subscribe. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something. See ya.